Okay class, so today we're going to be learning about multiplying numbers by 100. Um, so on this PowerPoint you will be able to see um, how using place value is going to help you when you're multiplying numbers by 100. There are, so, there are, are worksheets which have been saved into files on Teams um, and there are different levels on each worksheet. The worksheets should support the things that you learn on this PowerPoint. As you can see up here, the three symbols with the submarines. The top one um, is like a chili one challenge. The middle one is a chili two challenge. And the going deeper is um, a chili three challenge. So when you are printing off your worksheet from Teams, um, choose the challenge that you think is suitable for you. Um, don't just go for the easiest one or the most difficult one. Have a read of what the questions are first because you might be surprised and the questions might be thing might be uh, ones that you feel like you can answer even though it could be a chili three or a chili two um, or they might be trickier than you think. So that's why it's important to read the questions before you uh, choose which challenge you're going to do. Okay, so let's learn about multiplying by 100. So here it just explains with the chili challenges, like I've just said. It's a uh, diving deeper and deepest. Okay, so the aim today is to use place value, known and derived facts to multiply and divide mentally, including multiply by zero and one, divide by one, multiplying together three numbers. Okay, so let's see if you can match the images on the left uh, to the function machine and to the out outputs. So this is the input on this side, so that is what goes into the function machine. And on the right side is the outputs, what comes out of the function machine. So can you match the images on the left to the function machine and to the image on the right? So if you want to just pause the video. Uh, just now and have a little look at that and see if you can match those up. Okay, so let's find out what the answers are. So the first one is the two cubes. And um, the two cubes, when you put them into the times 100 function machine, your output is two hundreds. So two times 100 would be 200. The second box is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times 1 is going to give us which of these? The bottom one. 6 times 1 will give us 6. And the last but not least one is 4. 4 times 10 is the same as 4 tens. And that gives us that output. Okay, so using the place value grids to show the effect of each calculation before finding the answer. So the first one would be 9 times 1. Where would we, how would we write that into the grid? So 9 times 1 is the same as 9 ones. So we should have 9 in our ones column. 9 times 10. So that is going to be the same as 9 tens. So we would have 9 in our tens column. 9 times 100 is going to be 9 hundreds. So we should have 9 in the hundreds column. And can you see what's happened here? If you look at these numbers, we've got 9 times 1, so that's 1s. 9 times 10, that's 10s, 9 times 100, hundreds, and it's moving along each time. Every time, this number that we're multiplying by is getting 10 times bigger. 1 times 10 is 10, and then 10 times 10 would be 100. 100 times 10 would be 1,000, so that would be the next column along. So as you can see, when we multiply, each time it gets larger than 10, it moves to the next column to the left. Okay, so let's try the next ones. 
So this is a little bit different because in this number here, 23, 23 is made up of ones and tens, okay? So that means that we will be, instead of it being just the one column moving, like the previous questions, in these questions, we will be moving two columns. So each time we multiply by 10, um, and when we multiply by 100, it's the number, both numbers, as in both columns, the tens and the ones column, are going to move along. So let's have a look. 23 times 1, that will give us 3 in the ones column and 2 in the tens column. 23 times 10. So as you can see, we've got nothing in the ones anymore because we're not multiplying by 1, we're multiplying by 10. If this number ended in a 1, then there might be something in this column, but it ends in a 0, which means there should be nothing in this column, like the other ones. The hundreds up here ends in a z two zeros, so there should be nothing in these columns. Okay, so 23 times 10, we have 3 in the tens, and we have 2 in the hundreds, because 20, 20 tens is 200. 3 tens is 30. Okay, let's have a look at the last column. So because it's two numbers that we're moving, we've now got the thousands column added on because what is in our, because our first two, our first number, which is the two, which would be the same as two hundreds. No, sorry, tw the two, which would be the same as twenty hundreds. That's going to take us over the maximum amount of hundreds that we can write in a column. Okay, so let's have a look. So 23 times 100, that's going to give us 3 hundreds, so 3 in the hundreds column, and 20 hundreds as well. So that means 20 hundreds is the same as 2 thousands. So as you can see, our number, as we go from times 1 times 10 to times 100, we are moving our number place, both numbers place value over one column. Each number goes over one column. Okay. Right, so Colin and Mina have been calculating the answer to 26 multiplied by 100. Look at their representations and answers. Who is correct and who is incorrect? Can you explain why? Okay, so what I'd like you to do just now is pause the video, have a look at the questions and see if you can if you can work out what the answer is. So pause the video now and when you're ready to answer, press play again. Okay, so let's have a little look at what Colin has done for his representation. He's trying to do 26 multiplied by 100. Okay, so he has two tens and six ones. Now he's saying that his two tens times 100 is going to give us two thousands. And that his six times 100 is going to give us 600. Is he correct? And then we've got Mina, who's done 26 times 10, times 10, times 10. So let's find out what, what the answer is. Okay, Colin is correct. Yes, because 20 times 100 is going to give us 2,000 and 6 times 100 would give us 600. So we should have an answer of 2,600. Um, so, so yes, Colin is correct. But what has Mina done wrong? She is on the right path, but she's not quite right. Now, the, the reason that Colin is correct is when you multiply a number by 100, each digit becomes 100 times greater. So the six ones become 600s and the two tens become 2,000s, which is what I've just explained.
Mina, however, is not correct because she has multiplied by 10 and 10. Now, if she just stopped there and done 26 times 10, and then her answer times 10 again, that would have been correct. However, she's multiplied by 10 again, and that what she's actually doing is multiplying by 1,000, by doing 10 times 10 times 10, because that would give you 1,000. Okay, is Charlie's statement, sometimes, always, or never true? Explain your reasoning. Okay, so Charlie says, a number multiplied by 100 will always have an answer with three digits. Okay, have a little think about that. Pause the video now, have a think, and then come back on when you're ready for your answer. So pause the video now. Okay, so it's sometimes true because you can, if you multiply a number that is a three digit number by 100, your answer is going to be more than three digits. Um, so the answer will only have three digits if you multiply a one digit number by 100. If you multiply a number with more than one digit by 100, your answer will have more than one dig more than three digits. So here we go, some examples at the bottom. Six times 100 is gonna give you 600. However, if you do 51 times 100, that will give you 5,100. Okay, now let's get our brains switched on. This is the deepest question. Okay, so this one might, this one is going to get us really, really thinking about multiplying by 100. So Ed multiplies a whole number by 100. His answer has four digits. The sum of the digits is 17. So all of the numbers, all of the digits that are in his answer, if you added them all together, they would add up to 17. What could Ed's original number and calculation have been? How many possible answers could there have been? So I would like you to pause the video, read over that question again to just check that you understand it. Pause the video and have a go at trying to figure out what Ed's original number might have been. So pause the video now. Okay, so you will have had to think about that. Let's find out. Okay, so it could have been 98 times 100 because 9 add 8 is 17. Or it could have been 89 times 100 because 8 add 9 is 17. So that is what the answer is. Okay, so you needed to think of two numbers which added together to make 17. You need to also remember that when you multiply by 100, the numbers that you multiply are, um, they're they're going to end in two zeros because you're multiplying by 100. You wouldn't normally have anything. Well, you wouldn't have anything in the tens or the ones column. Your, an your answer will end in two zeros. So you always need to think about those two zeros, which are going to be at the end for the tens and the ones column. Okay, well done if you got that correct. Okay, we've also got this next question. A school hall has a perimeter of 50 meters. What is the length of the missing side? Give your answer in seven in centimetres. Now you need to remember that centimetres, there are how many centimetres in one metre? There are a hundred. So your answer is you're, you're going to use your knowledge of perimeter. Remember what you need to do when there's a missing side. Opposite sides are equal on a regular shape. And this is a regular rectangle. So opposite sides are equal. So you should be able to work out what the missing length is. And then whatever it is, you need to divide that by 100. Okay, well, well, not divide, sorry. You need to multiply it by 100 to find out what the answer is in centimetres. Okay, so pause the video now and have a go at trying to work that out. So pause the video now and I'll be back with the answers. Okay, so... What you should have remembered from when we did perimeter in class last term is that opposites and opposite sides are equal. And the, as you can see, the top side here is 10 meters. So that, and it's, this is a regular rectangle. 
So the top side's 10 meters, the bottom side's going to be 10 meters as well. This left side here is 15 meters, so this side's going to be 15 meters also. Okay, so the sum that we're wanting to do is, we're wanting to do 15 times 100. Okay, so 15 times 100 is going to be 1,500. So 15 meters, there are 100 centimeters in every meter, so that's why we're doing 15 times 100. So 15 meters equals 1,500 centimeters. Okay, um, well done today, everybody. Now, there are some worksheets in saved into the files section on your Teams page. Um, so if you want to carry on practicing these skills, it's fo it's following the same format as what we've just talked about with um, the chili challenges. So the, there should be worksheets in there which are challenge or, or the right challenge, um, even though it's got the little submarine. So remember the one at the top with the clouds, that's a chili one. The one in the middle with the fish, that is um, a chili two. And the one at the bottom of the ocean is the chili three. Um, so have a go at those. If you've got any questions about uh, about multiplying by 100 or anything you're not sure about, please send me a message on Teams um, and hopefully I'd be able to help you out. But then the worksheets for you to carry on with this task are, are in, your t in your Teams files. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.